Roots are the hidden half of the plant, and they quietly control far more than most growers realize. Leaves and stems get all the attention because they're visible, but the limiting factor in containers is often underground. When roots are healthy, oxygenated, and actively expanding, the plant drinks predictably, absorbs minerals efficiently, and maintains steady growth. When roots are constrained, circling, compacted, or chronically oxygen starved, everything above ground becomes inconsistent. Watering swings get worse, nutrient delivery becomes uneven, and the plant can look mysteriously off even when the environment seems dialed in. Root systems aren't just plumbing, they're living tissue that regulates water uptake, mineral uptake, hormone signaling, and stress responses. The root tip is a highly active zone. It senses moisture gradients, responds to oxygen availability, and continuously produces new cells that become the fine feeder roots responsible for most absorption. These fine roots, and especially their fresh, actively growing tips, are where uptake capacity really lives. A container can turn that dynamic system into a bottleneck when roots hit the wall, begin circling, and form dense layered mats that reduce functional surface area and reduce uniform moisture distribution. This is why root architecture matters as much as root mass. A big root ball isn't automatically a healthy one. A root system can be large but inefficient if it's mostly thick, woody roots that circle and dominate space while producing fewer new feeder tips. It can also be large but unhealthy if the interior stays too wet and oxygen poor, encouraging root dieback and opportunistic microbes. In many container scenarios, the plant isn't limited by how much nutrient is available in the feed. It's limited by how consistently the roots can access water, oxygen, and ions across the entire root zone. That sets the stage for the controversial concept of root pruning. Root pruning is a deliberate, controlled disturbance of the root system used in horticulture to prevent severe root binding, stimulate new branching, and restore a higher proportion of young feeder roots. It sounds counterintuitive, cutting roots to improve growth, but the biological rationale is real. When a portion of the root system is reduced, the plant shifts into a compensatory response. It reallocates resources toward rebuilding absorptive capacity, often increasing the production of lateral roots and fresh root tips. In simple terms, the plant replaces old, inefficient root structure with newer, more active root growth. If the intervention is moderate and the plant is healthy enough to recover. The science behind that response is tied to plant signaling and resource allocation. Roots and shoots communicate constantly through hormones and sugars. Roots produce signals that influence shoot growth and shoots send carbohydrates down to fuel root expansion. When roots are reduced, the plant initially experiences a drop in water and nutrient uptake potential. In response, it prioritizes rebuilding the absorptive network, especially the fine roots that restore function. The relationship between auxin and cytokinin is part of this story. Auxin produced in shoots helps guide root development, while cytokinin produced in roots influences shoot growth patterns. Disturbing roots changes the balance of these signals, and a moderate disturbance can trigger branching and renewal rather than collapse again, only within a safe range. That safe range is the difference between productive stress and damaging stress. There is a Goldilocks zone for root disturbance. Too little change doesn't alter the underlying structural problem. Too much change overwhelms the plant's ability to maintain water balance, causing wilting, stalled growth, and increased susceptibility to disease. Root pruning isn't a cheat code, it's a trade. It creates a short-term dip in capacity in exchange for long-term improvement in root function. Whether the trade pays off depends on timing, plant health, and the stability of the environment during recovery. This also explains why root pruning is often misunderstood. Many people treat it as a growth hack, when it's more accurately a root system correction tool. The plants that benefit most are those whose roots have become structurally limited, bound, 
circling, or uneven, where uptake is inconsistent, and the plant is showing signs that the container is becoming a physiological constraint. In contrast, a plant with a healthy, expanding, well-aerated root system is often better served by prevention strategies rather than pruning. The first step in intelligent root management is recognizing real root zone limitation versus look-alike problems. Root binding and root dysfunction can produce above-ground symptoms that resemble nutrient issues, watering issues, or environmental stress. One common cue is irrigation instability. A plant may dry out unusually fast because roots have filled the container and water begins channeling along the edges, bypassing parts of the medium. The opposite can also happen. The container stays wet too long because the medium compacts, oxygen diffusion drops, and roots slow down, reducing transpiration demand. Another cue is uneven drinking behavior, sudden swings between perky and droopy, that don't match room conditions, often because the root zone is not uniformly hydrated or oxygenated. Stalled growth can also be a clue, particularly when the plant is otherwise healthy and conditions haven't changed. When new growth slows, internodes shorten unpredictably, and the plant seems to hit a ceiling, it's often worth considering whether the root system has become structurally constrained. But it's important to avoid false positives, overwatering, poor aeration, low root zone oxygen, and temperature stress in the root zone can mimic root binding. A plant can look root bound when the real issue is that the medium is staying saturated and suffocating the roots. In that case, pruning won't solve the cause and can actually worsen the situation. Root pruning, when used in horticulture, is most defensible when it's part of a broader goal restoring a root system that can once again build fine tips, distribute moisture evenly, and maintain stable uptake. It is also most defensible when the plant has enough energy and time to recover. Root regeneration is energy intensive. The plant needs carbohydrates, stable environmental conditions, and adequate oxygen in the root zone to rebuild. When conditions are unstable, recovery slows and the risk of secondary problems rises. This is why many growers prefer root pruning prevention strategies rather than root pruning interventions. Container design is the most powerful prevention tool. Air pruning containers and fabric pots naturally reduce circling by exposing root tips to air at the edges. When root tips encounter air, they desiccate at the tip and the plant responds by branching behind that tip, creating a denser network of feeder roots instead of long circling roots. This leads to a more fibrous root ball with higher absorptive surface area and fewer structural problems. In many cases, choosing the right container eliminates the need for aggressive root interventions altogether. Substrate structure is another major prevention lever. A medium with stable porosity supports oxygen diffusion and reduces compaction. This matters because roots need oxygen for respiration. When oxygen is limited, root metabolism slows, nutrient uptake becomes less efficient, and the plant becomes more sensitive to stress. In a chronically low oxygen root zone, even correct feeding can look like deficiency because the roots can't power uptake effectively. Proper aeration, stable moisture balance, and avoiding long saturation periods can maintain root health better than any corrective technique. Transplant timing is also a preventative form of root management. A plant moved up in container size before severe circling and matting develops will often maintain healthier architecture without any need for cutting or disturbance. The goal is to keep the root system in a state of active exploration rather than confinement and looping. The best root systems aren't the ones that are constantly being fixed. They're the ones that never fall into severe structural limitation in the first place. When root intervention is considered, sterility and disease prevention become non-negotiable because disturbed roots are vulnerable roots. Anytime roots are exposed, abraded, or reduced, the plant temporarily loses part of its protective barrier and its ability to regulate water balance. 
opportunistic pathogens take advantage of that window, especially in warm, wet environments with poor airflow. Clean tools and clean handling reduce risk, but just as importantly, the recovery environment needs to be stable. Consistent moisture, sufficient oxygen, moderate temperatures, and minimal additional stress stacking. Recovery itself is often where outcomes are decided. A disturbed root system needs time to rebuild fine roots and regain stable uptake. That recovery period is not the time for aggressive changes above ground. The best recoveries usually come from stability, steady moisture management that avoids extreme wet dry swings, consistent oxygen availability, and a reduction in external stress load. The plant should be allowed to reestablish a predictable drinking rhythm before being pushed into demanding conditions. It's also important to understand what success looks like after a root correction. Damaged roots do not instantly translate into visible improvement the next day. Instead, the earliest signs of improvement are typically behavioral. Drinking becomes more consistent, leaves regain steady posture, new growth becomes smoother and more uniform. Over time, the plant's overall vigor improves because uptake is less chaotic. The real win is stability, stable hydration, stable nutrient delivery, and stable growth patterns. That stability is what supports higher performance above ground. There are also limitations that should be stated plainly. Root pruning is not a guarantee of improved outcomes, and it is not a substitute for good root zone fundamentals. If the underlying issue is chronic oversaturation, poor aeration, incorrect container choice, or unstable environment, the plant may re-enter dysfunction even after intervention. A corrected root system placed back into the same root hostile conditions will eventually become dysfunctional again. The most effective approach treats root pruning as a last resort correction tool, while the main strategy focuses on preventing severe root constraints through container design, medium structure, oxygen availability, and consistent irrigation practices. Another frequently overlooked aspect of root stress is the impact on symbiotic relationships. In many cultivation systems, beneficial microbes and mycorrhizal associations support nutrient cycling and root resilience. Disturbing roots can disrupt these networks. That doesn't mean root interventions are always bad, but it does mean the recovery window is not only about the plant, it's about the root ecosystem. A stable environment supports both root regrowth and the rebuilding of healthy microbial balance, which contributes to long-term vigor and stress resistance. There's also a practical reality that root management is inherently system dependent. Techniques that work in one setup can be inappropriate in another. Some systems emphasize sterility and low organic load. Others emphasize living biology and rich microbial communities. Some systems are tolerant of mechanical disturbance, others are not. The best root strategies respect the system's logic rather than forcing a one-size-fits-all hack. The future of root management is moving away from dramatic interventions and toward continuous optimization. Better container engineering, better substrate science, and better monitoring are making it easier to keep roots in their ideal operating zone without major disturbances. Sensors and smarter irrigation controls can reduce chronic saturation, prevent extreme drybacks, and keep oxygen levels more consistent. The result is a root zone that stays productive across a longer window with fewer emergencies and fewer reset moments. Root pruning remains an important concept because it forces a shift in perspective. The plant's performance isn't only the canopy, it's the infrastructure below the surface. When that infrastructure is healthy, everything above ground becomes easier to optimize. When it's compromised, every other adjustment becomes less predictable. The most effective cultivation strategies don't start with leaves. They start with the root zone where water, oxygen, and uptake capacity determine what the plant can actually do. And that's the real lesson. Controlled stress can be a tool, but the highest performing plants don't rely on crisis interventions. 
They rely on root zone fundamentals that keep the root system expanding, oxygenated, and functionally dense. When the hidden half is built correctly, the visible half follows. Well, that's it for today, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and please comment with video suggestions and ideas below. But thank you for watching, and as always, peace.